when we drop this video, you know, you might have some comments. I'm not saying we will have this comment, but you might have someone commenting saying, well, so then why don't you go sell everything you own mm -hmm. and, uh, and just go to like Africa and help children in need with all that money that you have. Uh, maybe not you specifically, but like Christians mm -hmm. in general, I know you've probably heard something along this line and mm -hmm. I think we've heard it too. Mm -hmm. And, um, I feel like there's a huge misconception it's regarding crazy. Christianity. Like, I want to say first century Christianity mm -hmm. uh, and what they did and us Christians now. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say to that person if they left that comment? Yeah. Well, it's a great comment. Uh, if you are that person and you're thinking that and you're leaving that comment, it's a great comment. Um, there's two stories in the, in the Bible or two people in the Bible in the New Testament. And one of them was a guy who was super wealthy and he came to Jesus and uh, he was like, Rabbi, what, what do I do? To be saved like how, how can I do this like what and Jesus said well you need to obey all the commandments and this guy said well I've done them all I follow all the commandments I haven't broken any of the commandments and Jesus knew that the issue in the guy's heart was what had him and so his wealth is what had him he didn't own what he had what he had owned him and so even though he had all the commandments and he hadn't broken any of them, which is crazy to think because I've broken the commandments, not all of them, but any of them. And Jesus looked at me, and goes, then you know what you need to do? Go sell all your, give away all your money and give it to the poor. Go sell it all. And he walked away totally broken because it was the one thing he couldn't do because what he had owned him. Yet you look at another example and Judas is a Jesus and Jesus gets this lady who comes and dumps this basically years worth of value perfume on his feet at a party. Mm -hmm. And you would go, you know, in ancient times, uh, you go into a home and your feet would be dirty mm -hmm. from walking. And so the, the, the house owner would have someone there who washed your feet. And in this party that Jesus showed up to this, this lady, she shows up with this bottle of perfume and she takes one year's worth of a salaried, like whatever your salary is for the year, equivalent to that. And she pours it on his feet and washes it. And Judas, one of Jesus' disciples says, Jesus, like what, what's wrong with this woman? Wouldn't this money have been better used to be given to the poor than wasted on your feet? Mm. And Jesus then talks to Judas again about what owns him. He said, no, what she has is good. What she's done is she's anointed me because she wasn't owned by her perfume. Mm -hmm. She owned her perfume. Judas, because Judas was the disciple who carried the money belt. Mm -hmm. like yeah. Judas is the guy who paid for their food. Whenever people give them, he, that's why he was able to give 30 pieces of silver to betray Jesus, ironically, money that came from Jesus' ministry, Judas betrayed him with, and, um, which is another crazy whole thing. But it's, again, it's not so much, because Jesus goes on later and he says, listen, you're always going to have the poor with you. He didn't say that you shouldn't help the poor. He just said, you're always going to have the poor. There are always going to be people who just don't have enough because our world is broken. There is going to be poverty and poor things and poor people all the time. The issue is not you live as a pauper. The issue is what owns you. And if what you have doesn't own you, then get as much of it as you can and use it so that you can serve people. Just like that. Get as much of it as you can if it doesn't own you. If it owns you, you need to get rid of it. So can you talk to us a little bit about why Jesus then said it's easier for, you know, um, or how does Rich it go? Man. Yeah, it's it's rich uh, man to go through the eye of a needle. Sorry, it's easier for a camel yeah. to go through easier the eye of a needle. Easier for a camel and a rich man to, to get in heaven. Exactly. Can you right. explain that? Because a lot of times people might think, so then wait. I can't be a Christian and be wealthy, mm. right? That's a, that's a huge thing yeah. a lot of people think. Yeah. Like I need to not have money or not mm -hmm. have material things, right? right? Can you just, you know, dive into that a little bit? Yeah, that's great. Um, I tell, you know, when I talk about money and stuff in our church, I tell people all the time, greed has nothing to do with what you have. It doesn't. No. You can be someone who lives on the streets of LA or Toronto or New York and be totally greedy. And you can be someone who lives in the penthouse at Trump Tower and be totally generous. 
Because greed has nothing to do with what you have. Greed is your heart's in here. Yeah. Greed is like, I know friends of mine who are wealthy beyond what I could ever imagine. And they are the most generous people ever, but they're also some of the most frugal. Uh, sorry. Let me say it this way. Thrifty, not frugal. Cause I tell people in our church, be thrifty, not frugal. If you're <laughs> frugal, you're going to chintz on everybody. Yeah. Be thrifty. Yeah. So if it's the same, then get the one on the lower shelf. That's half the price. You yeah. don't need the brand name. So be thrifty, not frugal. If you're going to be frugal, well, then you're not going to get the same thing. You're going to go get the junk knockoff. That's crap. That breaks in three weeks. Yeah. Don't be that. That's a cheap cheapo. Don't be that. Be thrifty. <laughs> don't be frugal. I like that. And uh, <laughs> I use that with people. I use that with my daughter all the time. We're being thrifty, honey. I'm not being frugal. Um, <laughs> I'm going to borrow that one. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, when I talk about money, I'm always like, you can be loaded and be generous. You can be loaded and greedy. You can be broke and greedy. You can be broke and loaded or uh, broke and generous because greed has nothing to do with that. And what Jesus was trying to say, does that make sense so far? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm following. Um, just like, you know, a homeless person, they may have nothing to you, but what they have, they may be so greedy that they just grab on because they're greedy. And they're, they're just ravenous about it. And that's happened to me, man. I've given right. food to the homeless guy, like so, like to different homeless people. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't always happen. It's happened where they're like, that's it. They've right. said that to me, like, that's all right. you got me. And I'm like, or, or the, or the other scenario where, um, you'll go up, like I've seen videos where they go up to a homeless person who has like a slice of pizza and say, I'm, I'm, they'll say I'm homeless. Can you share with me? And they'll share with them. Right. And it, that's all they have. Right. And so to your point that it's, it's about the person's heart. Yeah. And also I think just another point that we should probably make is a lot of people get it wrong where they say money is the root of all evil. Right. And it's not. And it's the, love it's the love of is love money is the root of all evil. Yeah. Cause again, what you love is what owns you. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's not, the money is not the root. It's, it actually says the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil mm. is what it actually says. It doesn't say money is the root of all evil. Um, money is not evil. Just like my phone's not evil. What I do with it can be evil, but the TV's not evil. <laughs> uh, the phone's not evil. YouTube's not evil. You can use it to do evil, but this is just a phone. It's not good, righteous, or evil. It just is. It's a physical thing. Um, and so m the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil because it's about what owns you. And if money owns you, you will compromise all of your beliefs and convictions to either not lose it or to get more of it. And so when Jesus, or when in the New Testament, Jesus is talking about it's, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man, a rich person to enter heaven. He was making the contrast. Now, we don't know. Like, I know there's some people say because in, in Jerusalem and in cities, there was a small spot that you could get in and out of the city as a kind of a secret space. And they called it like the eye of a needle. It's really tiny. Okay. And um, we don't know if that's exactly what Jesus was talking about. But it's kind of the idea that you can't fit a camel through there. Uh, like, I've ridden a camel. Camels are massive even when they're sitting on the ground. Um, they're huge. And you couldn't get a camel through the eye of a needle. It makes no sense. But he could have also been talking about the eye of an actual needle, the little mm -hmm. yeah. hole in the top of a, of a needle. You can't get a camel through that. They're both ridiculous. Yeah. And he was using the idea that most rich people, and we know that's true. I'm not saying about every rich person, just like I'm not saying it about every homeless person. Yeah. I'm not, none of what I'm saying has anything to do about homeless people. I wasn't, I was just using the extreme as an example. For sure. There are some, some of the most, I know people who've choose, chosen to live homeless to be with the homeless. I know personal friends of mine who have sold their house, sold their car and they live on the streets Really, and they live with homeless people just like them because they want to identify with them. And I know they just live a, a homeless life and they, live with homeless people and they're, they're some of the most wonderful. They just, a whole bunch of them, they just had a bad deal in life and life has just collapsed on them and they live with them to serve, but God's also given them that gift to do that and that calling. And there's lots of rich people. Jesus was saying wealth corrupts, man. 
Mm. Like you get lots of dough, it's really hard to part with the money. Like it's really hard. And I think we've seen that whenever people have won the lottery and terrible track out, record terrible, of their life. Yeah. Terrible. Crazy. Like it just, their life goes yeah. really downhill from right. there. And it's the weirdest like mm -hmm. phenomenon that I've ever like heard of or seen. Cause like you would think getting a hundred million dollars would make your life a lot better. Right. It's a lot of people they've later like, you know, killed themselves. I've yeah. read stories where, you know, they've actually killed themselves. Just destroyed their they've life. They've lost their whole, their whole families. Mm -hmm. They've lost uh, their kids have also, you know, killed themselves. And it's like, it really does um, corrupt. Like it's because really ease, sad. ease isn't what makes your life matter. Purpose is what makes your life matter. Mm -hmm. And if you have a purpose in life, then the purpose owns you. Not the money, not the ease, mm -hmm. not the difficulty. The purpose owns you. Yeah. And we just believe this world, especially this world where you become a YouTube influencer overnight and, you know, multimillionaire, like, and you're just Everything's like, quick, 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 right. fast money. Right. Yeah. And we miss it.